Friday morning. We really do need to get the lights off that tractor. This concrete is sort of going off. It's just on this bend where the, the pillar's damaged. Thought about putting a block of concrete there, but then it just meant that if someone clipped the block of concrete, it'd send it that way. I'm gonna chase the brick up today, see what he says. If not, we will just shutter it off and we'll concrete around the bottom just to give it some support for now. Someone actually joked last night, have you got a farm cat to walk over it through the night? And yes, we have. Yeah, it's just going off nicely now. One of the socket, well, not a socket, telephone line base plates is broken in the offices, so I've got a new one. I'm just gonna go and screw that on now. I think they thought they were going to get electrocuted, but it's only BT wise. Andrew's just back from taking straw. The other day, Ian tried to adjust this a little bit and it snapped the bracket at the bottom. So we've got a new bracket now. We ordered it from Malpas. So we're going to stick that on now. We didn't order it from Pews, which is where the Merlot came from, because we were passing Malpas. And also, we looked online and I think they, they were slightly cheaper than, than Pews. So, so I sorted out for you, don't know what you're doing now, your parts. I'll probably ring me up tomorrow now, Modi. <laughs> ah, Sparex. I might be white less because it might be non genuine. Anyway, I'm gonna swap the metal bracket at the bottom where it's like cast alloy. Because it's only that bit that's broken and it was £10 cheaper to get one with a short arm than a long arm. So I'll swap them over. But this is where I find because it's probably not genuine, it might not swap across. It should do though. Just looking, it's wrong. It's like a mirror image. So the arm's coming out of this side on this one, whereas that one, it's coming out of that side. So it won't work. Oh! Thought I'd save the tenner there. Andrew's just strapping up now. This is a load of OSR straw, which I think someone's gonna be using for their biomass boiler. So he's gonna put some more straps on and deliver that in a minute. Look at that sky, amazing today. Actually, this is our Mini Merlot. So we said the one on the Mini Merlot outside. And I've just looked back through the video and it was the same as the Mini Merlot in their yard was the same as the Mini Merlot in our yard. And if you look at that, can you see that bracket is exactly so many degrees out of sync, isn't it? That is one of them. So it's actually this that's wrong not what I ordered wrong. Giving up with the mirrors now. Apparently these cross reference from Merlot to Spurex, Spurex have got it wrong and that's why it's a mirror image. So they're now ordering the genuine one, which is then the same price as Pews anyway. Anyway, but well, we've got to turn that one back. I'm just going to cover the concrete up now with the plastic in case it freezes tonight because I don't want it damaging it. The problem with covering up now is doing it without walking on it too much. So see what I can do. That should do now. It's just to, so it doesn't come on the top. Actually, where's the the line's here, isn't it? Was it there? Where's the line? Yeah. Ah. Hold on, pull it this way a bit. Get it. I get a block of wood down there, something. Rob's just doing a little bit of double chipping now. We are waiting for some guides for the chipper. We're going to be here on Monday. So then we can put some logs through because the guides control how big a bite it takes. And if we put them through now, it takes too big a bite, it could damage the, the teeth. It's okay if we double chip. But it's, it's all obviously already chopped up. Though the belt looks like it needs reversing at the moment, but you can see it's not actually feeding it in. That's steam, not smoke as well. It's still quite a cold day. Uh, I must explain about the chipper as well. Like loads of people saying, why don't you just buy a new chipper? You're always working on it. Well, it doesn't matter how new the chipper is. If it gets foreign objects through it, mainly tools, it is gonna go wrong, whether it's brand new or six years old like that one. 
I know we had a few issues around the blue sensors and all like that, but touch wood, they're not doing too bad at the moment. Sorry, my phone rung, that's where I'm up to. I forgot where I was up to. But anyway, yeah, so even a new chipper, if you put contaminants through tools, different like that, it'll still smash it up. The other thing is, that's a chipper, it's massively oversized because sometimes it's chipping brash and sometimes it's chipping big logs. So we need a chipper that's got a big mouth on it. If we had a smaller chipper, it would end up working instead of one day a week, which that should work, it'd end up working two, three, four, and they're actually not a lot cheaper. But I knew one of them chippers now is £380,000. Now, £380,000, one, I haven't got it, and two, if I financed it, you're talking thousands a month. It just doesn't add up. But then someone was like, well, why has he bought a new combine? Well, the thing why I bought a new combine is because if you divide it over the acres that combine covers and you add in the warranty and the fact that you can chip on a wet day, you can't really combine on a wet day, it makes more sense to spend my money that I'm going to spend on HP finance or even outright on machinery that is more weather dependable than a chipper that can chip in the dark, it can chip in the rain, it can chip in the frost, it can work 365 days a year. So if it does have a breakdown, it doesn't matter. And there's not that many people stood there doing nothing. If you get a breakdown in harvest, you're falling behind. There's people stood there ready to cart grain. It's not going to be there. Your baler gets behind. Everyone gets behind. Or you piss off the person you're combining it for, such as Bill. The other thing that I spent a lot of money on was the sprayer. Well, the sprayer works 10 months of the year. And again, it's also time and weather critical. Because if you don't get a sprayer on the right time, there's no point in putting it on. So that is why I need, I want reliable agricultural machines because they're weather dependent. This machine is our diversification for when we're not busy. If it breaks down because it's getting old, fair enough. But like I say, a lot of the breakdowns are not from it being old, they're from contaminants, which any machine will do. Also, there isn't many that have a shear bolt protection like that one does. It doesn't make the best quality of chip, but it's got a shear bolt protection and it doesn't blow itself up when it goes wrong. Some of the tractor mounted ones, because that's another question that someone said on the farming forum, you've got some big tractors, why don't you have a tractor mounted one? They generally have an impeller on them, like a forager, to blow it into the trailers. If you put something through that shouldn't and smash a blade off that then goes through your impeller, you not only smash your drum up, you smash your impeller up, which is nearly as costly. That has a, has a rear discharge belt, so it doesn't happen to it. So yeah, that's a little bit of why I haven't got a new chipper. Don't get me wrong, I'd love to have a new chipper. So if you want to keep liking and subscribing and the viewers maybe rise then I would. But I tell you now, it would take a hell of a long time for, for YouTube to be able to buy me a new chipper. Just going to quickly do the Berkey bump pass. Will Latchford is 22. Heather Edrington is 10. Sandra Bretherton. Then now we're going to go look at something else. Then we're going to come back and do the other half of the Berkey bumper. Just to mess up the people that fast forward through it. I'm just in the wheat store. The load of wheat that went yesterday, when it arrived, he was saying that there's quite a lot of chaff in it. And when you load a wagon, it runs to the side. But also, I've come in to have a look what's going on. And when you load a shed, it runs to the sides as well. So when we fill this shed, we piled up all that side. But when you pile it up and push it up with a pusher, any chaff and bits will sort of like roll down the edge, as you can see here. Then we went combined and combined some dry stuff, which we then put in this side of the shed so then basically you had a valley of chaff that roll that way and a bit of a valley of chaff that roll this way on top of the fact at about the midway through the shed we cut 44 acres up the road that had been patched up with that spring wheat which didn't thrash that well but because it didn't need drying there's little bits like that that are blind heads and there's nothing in them really but they're still quite heavy that fell through the sieve of the combine and ended up in this pile whereas all that side of the shed all went through the dryer so we've got like a little bit of a concentration of chaff now it wasn't out of spec but they were they were well complaining as opposed to the best way of putting it so anyway we need to either throw this through the dryer we're about 20 ton here we need to put for the dryer and clean it out but it was still in spec but it's just a bit annoying really but it, i'm trying to work out how it happened but i know just the way the shed's been filled just like when you fill a wagon all the chaff runs to the corners and when it comes out it all comes out down each side maureen arnold samuel and taylor is 10 ben frost on Connor Kelly is 47. So yeah, anyone that's fast forward and hasn't just ex expected this bit, which I find quite funny. Happy birthday everyone on that and everyone else's birthday is. Alright, Joe. Have you found a son off Nerf gun? <laughs> he doesn't like it when we say alright Joe to him. Alright Joe! <laughs> Me and Andrew did intend to take the lights off this today. 
I've been on the phone most today. I've been selling a uh, bungalow since October and the people have been messing around as it's getting near the completion date. So I spent most of the time on the phone to the solicitor and the state and trying to work out what is going on because if they're going to pull out, I want to know and get it back on the market. Anyway, long story, but it's probably took up quite a bit of my week. Andrew took two loads, some straw this morning to somewhere else and then took some this afternoon to a different farm and there's been a crash on the motorway blocked all the roads around it took him four and a half hours it, he should have done it in three so he's <laughs> come back very hungry so my dad has also got in the same traffic jam as well trying to pick a livery up from school so yeah it's one of them days around here but friday isn't a good time to drive anyway most of the time is it especially when everyone finishes work well no, most normal people finish work at dinner time on a friday don't they we're still out here working waiting for the sun to go down now this is today's quiz question and i can open it does anyone know what this is for? If you think you know, leave a comment below. Also, AdBlue saw a thing on Twitter yesterday. Someone had got an IBC mixed up. They had a little bit of AdBlue in the bottom and they'd gone and given it to some cows because they had some water frozen. They'd kill the cows because of urea poisoning. So be careful with your uh, IB, yeah, AdBlue containers. Anyway, it's dark now. Rob's going home, I'm going in, editing what you've just watched. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all tomorrow.